If I could describe to get my life tour in one word, it would be vulnerability. Showing up for yourself is so important. Welcome to the Get My Life Tour. I'm your host, Lydia T. Blanco. back to the Get My Life Tour. I am your host, Lydia T. Blanco. And like always, I am super excited that you decided to show up and join me on the Get My Life Tour. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. I am so glad that you decided to check out the Get My Life Tour. You know, I always tell people admission is free, so I'm so glad that you are here. Oh, what a pleasure. And if you are returning, thank you so much for just being so tried and true and being here on tour with us. I am, y'all, I feel like I'm at a very transitional place in life. And I have been trying to figure it out for quite some time. And every time I sit down with a woman, um, whether it be here on Get My Life Tour, if I'm connecting with someone in my life, I am just so grateful for the opportunity to be sh- able to share, but also for the opportunity to be poured into. And as I am in this, you know, season of transition, one of the things that really has been um, pressing on me is how I wait for whatever is next to come. So that's what I really want to talk about on this stop of the tour is while you wait. And that will be the title for this episode of the Get My Life Tour, While You Wait. You know, I remember hearing a sermon years ago about waiting. And of course, it was in the confines of a church. And there were a number of of points of discussion that the pastor at that time was talking about. And I think oftentimes now when we hear um, the word wait, we are thinking about waiting, you know, to have sex or be intimate until marriage or um, waiting for the next big opportunity or whatever the case may be. But I don't want to talk about anything in particular on this stop of the tour because I will not assume that I know what it is that you're waiting for, but I really want to talk about the process of waiting. I honestly believe that waiting is one of the most difficult things to do. You know, we often talk about being still and just, you know, taking our time, but waiting, oh my goodness, have you ever been told to wait? I honestly have gotten to a point in my life where I actually am telling people, wait, wait one second or wait, I'll get right back to you. Would you mind waiting and I'll be able to circle back with you about X, Y, and Z? It often shifts the tone and the atmosphere for the person who I am speaking to about whatever the case may be. And that has always been something so interesting to me. I could honestly say I have been asked or told to wait. And then there's this feeling that comes over me. And I believe it is a feeling of uncertainty, right? Sometimes it's anxiousness because you're anticipating however long, you know, it will take. But y'all, waiting is so challenging. As I think about what it means to wait. I have all of these personal experiences, but I didn't want to just share from my own experiences. I want to, you know, give you all some some background, right? So I think we all know what it's like to wait, but the actual definition of wait as defined by Merriam-Webster is to stay in a place of expectation. Oh my. You know, it is hard to have great expectations at times, depending on how you wait or what your experience with waiting has been like. And look, I actually really appreciate this, right? To remain stationary, to remain stationary in readiness or expectation, to pause for another, to catch up, to look forward expectantly. I honestly think that sometimes it's hard to wait because 
we're not waiting with the right expectations. I think we're more focused on having to wait. With that being said, I also was curious and looked up the definition for while. So while, as defined by Merriam-Webster, is during the time that, also defined as as long as, or when on the other hand. In my favorite um, conjunction (laughs) for this definition of while is in spite of the fact. Okay, so I'm just, you know, going over these definitions because this stop on the tour while you wait, there is some wordplay, right? But it's very intentional. Speaking of intentionality, I think that it is important to note that waiting requires a certain level of commitment. It's hard to wait with great expectations or to be in a place where you feel like, okay, this is going to happen or, uh, and, you know, be uncertain. But that changes when you're committed to whatever it is that the end result is going to be. You know, we get so frazzled when we are in this laminal space or what some people consider to be limbo, right? But being committed to the result is key. And I think that's one of the first things that we have to, you know, reevaluate and take into consideration when we think about waiting. I keep looking at this definition and to stay in a place of great expectation really sticks out to me. I think it is difficult at times to wait depending on what it is that you're waiting for, right? Waiting for bad news just sucks on every level, right? But when waiting for something that we believe is for us or some space that we have been called to enter, great expectation matters. And I believe it matters so much because it is associated with our attitude and our heart's posture. How you wait and your attitude while you wait is... So very important. I think oftentimes we don't even receive what is meant for us or what is on the other side based on our attitude when we are told or made to wait. And you may not have had experience like that, but I most definitely have felt like my attitude while waiting for something really shifted the entire atmosphere while I was waiting. I remember having an attitude when I needed to wait in line for something or having an attitude because I thought that my waiting process was over because I had already waited so long. And I remember not being able to fully appreciate what it is that I was waiting for, or what it was that I was waiting for, because my attitude was just horrible. And I can admit that now because I realized that I couldn't even have the same level or experience the same level of appreciation that I would have when I received what it was that I was waiting for just because of my attitude. I challenge you um, the next time you are told to wait or you ask someone to wait to really take a step back and check you know, to see what your attitude is like or what that person's attitude is like, because it's going to make a difference in the level of gratitude or just the condition of what it is that you or they are waiting for to receive. Time is so valuable, right? And for us, you know, for a lot of people, it is invaluable because you can't really put a price on time. You know, people like to say time is money, this and that, but While you wait, I think the time that you spend waiting is very valuable as well because you'll never get that time back, right? But how you spend that time should matter Um, because there is a certain level of value that you associate that time with, right? Because you're like, I can't get that time back, this, this, and that. How long do I have to wait, right? But it also places value on the thing that you are waiting for. You know, outside of hospitals, I think a lot of us spend time in waiting rooms. And, you know, I keep visualizing this huge room 
and all these people being in there. And I don't necessarily picture people with elements or anything, but just a group of people sitting in a space. And like I said, attitude matters, valuing your time matters, um, and the condition of what it is that you're waiting to receive matters as well, right? But can you imagine being in a room full of people who are just complaining the entire time? Now, imagine someone who is of great faith and is very jovial and encouraging and is praying their way through. Um, And others who are very just nonchalant or those who are just paralyzed in fear because of the uncertainty. I think so many of us spend a lot of time in our lives in the waiting room. And we've honestly, I'll speak for myself. I've honestly been all of those people. I've been the warrior. I've been the warrior. I have been the person who has like waited on edge. Um, and the person who has waited in, you know, with great expectation. And I say that to say that we have to be mindful of how we occupy space um, in the space of the waiting room because it can just really make a big difference, number one, on perspective, right, but also on those around us, which brings me to my next point, who you have in the waiting room with you matters, It just does, because if you're in the room with all those people who you are connected to most definitely, you know, can influence how you wait and it can influence, you know, your level of enthusiasm, anxiousness or whatever the case may be. So I say that it is important to be mindful of the people who you have with you to the waiting room, you know. It's so interesting because I'm just thinking about the times that I've been to the hospital and my family or friends have been in the waiting room. And there are just some people who are super annoying. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, ma'am or sir, is there anything else that you can occupy yourself with as you wait, while you wait? What else can you be doing? You know, is there an email you can send? Would you like to scroll on social media to calm your nerves down? How about you take a walk? Would you like to pray? Are there any deep breaths that you can take or what is it that you can do, you know, to take your mind off of whatever it is that you are expecting while you wait? You know, I'm giving the example of the waiting room, but maybe that's, you know, while you're at home, maybe that's in your workplace, maybe that's as you travel and enter different spaces, wherever um, you are, you create a waiting room and just mindset and atmosphere wherever you go. And I say all of those things to, you know, hopefully challenge you to think differently about how you occupy space while you're waiting and how you show up while you are waiting. Sometimes we can't be our best selves while we wait because the uncertainty is too much, but it is on us to make sure that we are showing up all of the time, um, you know, healthy and whole, even when that is very hard to do, because how we wait often impacts those around us. You know, and speaking of the waiting room, I would be remiss if I did not say that how you treat others while you wait is extremely important. I think Oftentimes, when we were told to wait, we personalize that time in that space. And we don't really take into consideration the people who are around us. Being kind while you wait matters because you never know who it is that you are going to rub shoulders with or engage with. And if your entire being is shifted or your energy or your vibration is low because you have to wait, That is not fair, number one, to other people. And secondly, or number two, you know, it just says a lot about the work that you have to do um, when it comes to being in community with others. 
I believe that we have the ability to determine what our weight looks like when we have that in spite of the fact mentality. Mindset matters so much. And when we think in spite of the fact, I think that shifts, you know, how we are actually existing while we wait. You know, in spite of the fact that, you know, this is not happening right now, I understand that that not now is a no, right? That's the in spite of the fact mindset. I think so many of us really can't hear or see past, you know, whatever that that time and space looks like, that we start to go other places in our mind while we wait. We make up things. We, you know, let people take up space in our head that they don't, you know, pay rent for. And we can't see the in spite of the fact. I believe that in spite of the fact is the optimism that we need. It is the the mindset, the attitude that we need. If you have an in spite of the fact mindset, you can shift the atmosphere, right? You can determine what that weight looks like. And sometimes the fact is not always what the end result is. One plus one equals two. Yes, I get it, right? Simple math. But sometimes things aren't what they appear. Now, y'all know I'm horrible at math, but follow along where I'm going. In spite of the fact, Okay, so this was the diagnosis, but in spite of that fact, this is how I'm going to live. Okay, I didn't get the promotion. Well, in spite of not receiving the promotion, this is what I'm going to create in lieu of that or because this is what I'm passionate about. Okay, so the relationship didn't work. Hmm, he may not have, she may not have, they may not have, whatever the preferred gender pronoun is, may not have been the person for me, but I'm going to figure out what it is that makes me happy and brings me joy and keeps me moving so that when that person does come into my life, I'll be prepared. I'm not going to be better. I'm going to be better, right? That in spite of the fact, mindset can take you so many places um, while you wait. I like that. You, You see what I did there? While you wait, the in spite of the fact mindset can take you places. So I was thinking of a few things that you can do while you wait. And one of the things that some of us do not do a lot, and I had to take my time because I didn't want to generalize, but a number of people don't remember to breathe. We wait and we let so much time go by without taking a deep breath. Now, on the first season of the Get My Life Tour, I was joined by Jasmine Marie, who is a breathwork specialist. And I remember taking her class and it was, you know, at a really interesting point um, in my life. And I was like, okay, let me check this out. You know, Black Girls Breathing. And I remember laying on the floor, standing up and being in a position while um, we were breathing on my back and I took in a deep breath and I literally began to cry out. And I was like, okay, I'm supposed to be breathing. Why am I crying? You know, um, and I remember waiting for something at that point in my life. And I was just like, I think that I'm just releasing. Um, and I, that's, oh, that's a word. Release what it is that you're waiting for. They always say if you love something or if you want something or if it's meant to be, right, let it go and see if it comes back. That is not what I'm saying. But in those deep breaths, you're able to release. And I think that that's one of the ways um, to not distract, but to help you refocus and center yourself um, while you wait. So my first point is to take some deep breaths My second point, and it probably should have been my first point, but it is to be mindful, right? I talked about who is waiting with you, how you are waiting, your attitude and all these other things, but it's so important to be mindful while you are waiting of just so many things around you because sometimes waiting is not about you. 
It is not even about you, but it becomes about you and you personalize it when you don't know how to wait. So just be mindful um, of everything, how you treat people, like I said, how you wait um, and your heart's posture. I keep saying that. Right. But I think that's so important because sometimes our intention um, shifts when we wait. You know, you go from waiting expectantly, you're like, okay, I'm excited. And this is about to be lit to being like, okay, who? Okay, well, when this comes, okay, because finally I'll be able to, <laughs> right. It's a little attitude with intention. Um, my next point is to check in with yourself. I think that it is so key to just take a second to be like, okay, how am I doing? What is it that I'm feeling right now? Okay, what is it that I can be doing differently? Am I okay? Checking in with yourself is something that I most do, or checking in with myself is something that I'm learning to do more often. You know, I speak to myself out loud all of the time. I have great conversations with myself, but it is so important. I think that we just go throughout life passing through um, And checking in with yourself while you wait and just in general is so key. Of course, another um, point of mine is to be still. I think sometimes we are told to wait because we need to learn how to be still. I love the word that says be still and know. Right. Be still and know that I am God. When you believe that, um, if that is what you believe, it brings a sense of calmness and just peace because there is so much um, associated with the unknown. But when you sit and you are still and you are confident, I believe that helps you to perceive waiting or, you know, yeah, to experience waiting differently. Look, it is so hard to be still. Okay, I already done told you to wait. Now I'm asking you to be still. It's a lot. A lot of it is so mental. It is spiritual and it is beyond us. And I think that's why it is so hard to do. It's it's really challenging for me to do. I'm always on the go. And when I have to wait, I check in and this and that. And I'm like, okay, so where are we at with this? And blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, can you just wait? Can you just wait? That is a good question. Can you wait? I think tone matters when you ask that question too. Because uh, I'm here having this conversation, right? Recording into my microphone. I'm like, can you wait? Tone matters. But can you wait? What do you mind waiting? Look, that wasn't even a point of mine. But tone when you ask someone to wait is it matters. Okay. So, um, let's, let's remember our tone because oftentimes, you know, the saying it's not what you say, it is how you say it. And I can honestly remember times where I've been told or asked to wait and the tone, Oh, the tone. Okay. I'm about to hit the be Simone tone. Okay. Baby girl, it was horrible. I was like, what? Excuse me? I don't mind waiting, actually. You get offended because you're like, I can wait. I don't mind. I can wait, right? You have that whole dialogue. Anyways, I digress, right? Um, So be mindful. Take deep breaths. Check in with yourself. Um, Be still. Also, practice gratitude while you wait. I um, made it a point earlier to talk about not being able to receive what it is that or what it was that I was waiting for because I was, you know, so all over the place I couldn't be grateful for it, right? But I think that there was so much for us to be grateful for, to be thankful for that we already have. Oftentimes, you know, if it's not something that we're waiting for like the next big break or this or that, we have so much that we have received or inherited or whatever the case might be that we could practice being grateful and thankful for. And we forget to do that in our everyday lives because we're waiting for the next thing, you know? And I think if we focus and um, we shift our focus 
to one of gratitude, then the wait for whatever for whatever it is to come will not be as strenuous. Okay, so I'd like to think of like all of these things as practices. You have to practice waiting. I remember in college having to sit in chair and it happened on more than one occasion, even in high school, you know, playing softball and cheering. I remember feeling like having to sit in chair was punishment. Have you ever sat in chair? Okay, so you may not know what chair is depending on where you're tuning in from, you know, around the world. Shout outs to this global audience. Thank you so very much. You are incredible. But a lot of people who play sports have an experience or a shared experience of sitting in chair. So to sit in chair means to position your body against a wall or maybe without a wall and you literally squat and you sit in the position that you would sit when you sit in the chair but in midair it is very uncomfortable it is very challenging oh my gosh and it is upsetting sometimes when people tell you to sit in chair right um and I'm saying this because sitting in chair is challenging because it requires a certain mindset. We all know how to sit in a chair and get comfortable and relax, right? Some chairs are uncomfortable, but the practice of sitting in chair is also one of learning how to make yourself uncomfortable while you wait, but challenge yourself, your attitude and mindset as you complete that task. Now, That may sound like, huh? But if you've had the experience of sitting in chair, I think you know, I'm going to assume you know where I'm I'm coming from. It is mind over matter. And a lot of waiting is mind over matter. Your mindset over the time it takes to receive what it is that you are waiting for. I've been thinking about my mic drop moment and it's very simple this week. My mic drop moment is there's always someone watching you wait. I strongly believe that there have been times where I've been asked to wait and I have waited patiently. I've waited graciously and someone has been in the midst. It's like an angel in the midst. And you're like, you know what? Here. Or you know what? I saw that. Or you know what? Because of how you waited or because of how you responded, there has been this angelic association and reward, you know, if not benefit for how I've waited. So there is always someone watching you wait. Okay, so I'm going to cheat here a little bit and also say that sometimes waiting is the test and depending on how you wait will determine what your testimony is. Okay, so I'm just going to pick up the mic and drop it again because I really felt it on my heart to say that. So there's always someone watching you wait and sometimes waiting is the test that you have to pass in order to experience, you know, glory in the testimony of what it is that you are waiting to experience. I know that I've said a lot. I hope that this has resonated with you. I am waiting. I'm waiting patiently, at times anxiously, for a number of things. And I don't know what it is. Maybe you're not waiting for anything, but maybe this is something that can help you help someone else. And maybe you are waiting. I hope that, you know, what I've shared is helping you as you prepare yourself to continue to wait. And 
I, I I thank you for allowing me to share. Um, thank you so much for all of your support, for tuning in, and for making the Get My Life Tour what it is. Y'all, it has been such a pleasure each and every week. I'm I'm I'm, I'm smiling, okay? I'm stuttering. I'm like, ah, all of those things, but I'm, I'm extremely grateful, right? Um, as I wait for what is next, this um, podcast, Again, My Life Tour, has been extremely um, imperative for me to produce while I wait. Um, and it's not going to stop when the, you know, the thing that I'm hoping and praying for comes, but this is a part of my testimony. So I thank you for being a part of it. I thank you for showing up for yourself and joining me on the stop of the tour. It has been real. Be sure to connect with the Get My Life Tour on social at the Get My Life Tour. Join our Facebook community, the Get My Life Tour backstage and connect with me, your host, Lydia T. Blanco at Lydia T. Blanco on social. And let me know. Slide in my DMs on the Get My Life Tour um, or comment under, you know, the um, the photo or the meme associated with this stop on the tour. It has been real. And so next time and while you're waiting, peace.